stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call. Councilor Rowan. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Baybine. Present. Chairman Donovan. Here. Uh, general public comments. Anyone wishing to uh, speak uh, and address the town council may do so at this time. Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, minutes of March 2, 2016, regular meeting. Move approval. Second. Uh, any corrections to note? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Uh, adjustments to the agenda, there are none, uh, except for one that will come up in a moment. You want me to do it now? Or? Uh, yes, could, uh, that or, would be good. Jean Marie okay. Katerina is going to. <laughs> well, it's here at last. We have our Scarborough Facebook page. Um, if you go on to, Tony's going to bring it up here on the screen here. If you go on to Town of Scarborough, Maine, but make sure it's the community page because there's another one under a, a places page on Facebook. Uh, please like it. We already have 82 friends because Jean Marie put a sneak peek out because we need to do that in order to secure the address or I forget what it, what it was. Um, but I... I encourage everybody to go on Facebook if you're on Facebook and like it. What we're doing basically is we're going to link back and forth to the web page as well as um, we will probably put fire and police stuff on there. Fire and police will maintain their separate Facebook pages because they use theirs very differently than we will. Ours is more like a bulletin board information about meetings and whatever coming up. So. I'm very happy to present this to folks because I do know that a lot of people, myself included, get a lot of their information from Facebook. So any questions, anyone can email me at the uh, town council, through the town council web's uh, email address. Just a, a, a couple other further comments. Uh, the content that, that resides here, uh, predominantly it's, it's a combination of public works and community service community services, both of whom had their own separate Facebook page. We ran into some challenges with Facebook. Uh, it wasn't, uh, couldn't simply collapse the two together and enjoy all of the content and all of the, the friends and followers. Uh, but that's the intent, is that uh, all of that information uh, will now be viewed through this one site and we'll be augmenting it with other more general town information as well. Um, as the social media policy that this council adopted last month suggests, we're going to continue to do it at kind of the department, <coughs> departmental level. We have key staff that have been doing this right along, have been, been uh, shown themselves to be very trustworthy in terms of uh, what content they post. And I certainly don't want to uh, centralize this function. I think it will grind everything to a halt. So we want to keep it moving as it has in the past. And we appreciate how important it is to have good, consistent, rich content. Uh, at least making people aware and then driving them back to the website for more in-depth information as, as they would want. So I want to thank the IT department mm -hmm. for uh, getting this together and getting it up. So we're here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, old business, uh, order number 16-017. Uh, Act on the request to approve the names that were posted to the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals by the Appointments <coughs> Committee at the March 2, 2016 Town Council meeting. What is your pleasure? Move approval. Second. Uh, this is in order for uh, discussion. Uh, any discussion? Mm -mm. Seeing none, uh, let me identify the appointments. Appoint uh, Mr. Charles Spanger to the Conservation Commission to fill a term to expire in 2016. Appoint Mr. Michael Richard as second alternate to the Zoning Board with a term to expire in 2018. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, order number 16-19, act on the request for the Town Council. Oop, uh, new business, uh, skipped one. Order number 16-018, first reading and schedule a second reading on the bond order for the 2016 
municipal and school capital improvement projects and the refunding of certain general obligation bonds of the town of Scarborough and I will <coughs> ask the town manager to introduce this matter. Thank you. I'm just passing out something that I'll refer to uh, in a moment. I should have provided this in advance. Um, yes, what's before you this uh, this evening is, is our typical spring bond issue. Uh, this uh, is a bunch of past capital improvement projects. You'll see we've noted them by the year they were approved. Uh, the budget authority was granted. And as was mentioned just in the previous session on the audit, as you see, <coughs> many, for many good reasons, these projects uh, linger, if you will. Um, at any rate, we're now in a position to seek your authorization to uh, borrow money to, to cover these costs. What I just distributed <coughs> is the same list, but it shows you the proposed length of term for financing each of those items. And please note that it does vary. We, we do scrutinize uh, the different items, appreciate their life expectancy, <coughs> and don't ever want to bond any longer than the expected life of the item. Um, so I, I, I think that's should give you some comfort. We're not bonding these things for 25 years or anything. Uh, in some cases, it's as short as three years. Um, the other part of this uh, is to refund certain <coughs> past, advance refund certain past <coughs> uh, bonds, 2006, 7, 8, and 9 series GO bonds. Uh, and that's part of the annual analysis. Our financial advisor, who members of the Finance Committee met last week, does for <coughs> us. That's one of the services he offers to look at past existing debt to see if we can refinance it and save money. Um, Ruth Porter is here, the <coughs> town finance director. Ruth, it is safe to me. What is the present value savings of the refunding? Do you recall that? Um, <coughs> I got it here. It's, it's expected that we'll save about $285,000 by virtue of this refunding uh, of those previous savings. <coughs> so it, in our opinion, it certainly makes financial sense to, uh, to refinance uh, those old bonds. Good. Uh, public comment. Seeing none, favorite part of the job. <laughs> it's good. I should pass, pass this around. Let others enjoy. Uh, 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 this is ready for discussion. <clears throat> Start down in the end, Peter. Yeah, uh, Tom, just a quick question. The, the savings from refinance, is that because interest rates have changed? I mean, what, what predominantly results in the savings? Uh, I'll let Ruth's nodding your head. Yes, I think that's the okay. single largest uh, item. Uh, there may be some slight modification of term, but we're certainly not stretching these out for, you know, resetting the bar in that regard. Um, but I, I want to be clear, there might be some slight adjustment in term, yeah. uh, really to, for alignment purposes. Uh, and, and also... As mentioned earlier, we're looking to level that debt service as best we can. Yeah. Sometimes pushing a year out will help us in that kind of debt management. Mm -hmm. but predominantly, it's it's better interest rate, cheaper borrowing. But and so I'm just curious because I, I need a it seems like we're in a rising interest rate environment, or at least not a decreasing interest rate environment. So is it just a do we finance these at a time? Where, I mean, is that I mean, why is it why is this the appropriate time to do it versus not early later? Just curious, that's all. Just trying to understand. To the chair, I may defer to <coughs> Ruth Porter. Yes, please. The springtime is usually the best time for us to go out to bond. We seem to see favor favorable rates mm -hmm. when we do that. Yeah. Um, in terms of the way most of our bond issues are structured, they start out with low interest rates and they start to increase mm -hmm. over the life of the uh -huh. bond. So as the bond gets uh, more gets older, yeah. what we try and do is to, uh, you have to wait at least 10 years, but after that 10 year mark, they start to look at them and say, can we get better rates? Uh, okay. Thank you. And uh, before we, uh, let's uh, place the matter before us as a motion. Yeah. I'd move approval. Second. Uh, uh, comments. Yeah, two. Um, from what I understand, and I don't want to pretend that I'm either a trader <laughs> or that I work in this type of capital bond, but it's also a very positive time in which the appetite for municipal bonds out in the market mm. is extremely high, uh, where investors okay. are wanting these because of the tax credits and the gotcha. benefits. So um, the interest rates might only be slightly better, but <clears throat> it's really the appetite for others to buy it based on what I can understand, uh, um, what little I understand. 
what I did want to ask maybe uh, through the chair to our director, uh, finance director, of the $285,000, are there any obligations in which we um, divvy that up between school and the town and how was that then applied or allocated? Ruth, can you address that please? It's not that we actually allocate those savings. Well, I guess we do. We take the, the new principal and new interest and we say this much is now the schools, this much is now the towns. The amount that we advance refund comes off our books and if it's the schools, it comes off their books. If it's the town, it comes off ours. So we do see those. They, they will see those savings, some portion of it. I don't have the breakdown okay. right now. What no, yeah, I'm not looking. I was just wondering, you know, whether it's 50-50 is, is in a way irrelevant. But, but, but the school will get the benefit of the savings within their budgetary control as well as the Correct. towns for their portion. So it is shared amongst both organizations. To the extent we break out debt service separately, yes. Right. I, just, we track it I mean, if, if there were no school projects in these, yep. then no, they wouldn't. But, but the, yeah, I, I think that was are. important for the yeah. citizens to understand that it is shared. Councillor Katerina. Oh, good, you didn't move. <laughs> uh, through the chair. Um, this 285, is that over the term of the bonds or is that in this year? I believe that's over the term okay. of the bonds. And it depends on the length of the, each one of the separate bonds then? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it's cumulative. Thank you. I hesitate to make this point, but to <coughs> Councillor Babine's point of good time, uh, uh, municipal bonds are very attractive. I actually heard a piece on the radio and it defies logic, but there are bonds being purchased with negative yields. Right. Uh, they are so attractive, right. and I don't quite understand it, but. Uh, well, you get, they get the tax benefit of the negative yield. It's the tax, right? it's the tax credit benefit. Other questions? Uh, so Councilor Rowan. My, my question is more um, just kind of philosophically. I, I wonder, do we have a, a policy or some kind of a, around kind of when we uh, bond on a particular expenditure or when we would just pay it out of an allocation of uh, from our budget? The decision is made every year with passage of the uh, capital budget. We designate whether something is uh, appropriated funds, uh, in some cases it's grant <coughs> monies or reserve monies or bonded monies. Gotcha. So that's at the, that's at the time of the budget? That we yes, and I'm pleased to point that out to you when we dig into the budget. Um, and that would be something that the Finance Committee would actually look at the, uh, the nature of the expenditure, the capital asset capital item uh, mm -hmm. so a, a follow-up oh. if, if i could so then yes. what we're doing right now is we're just <clears throat> giving approval to, to purchase those bonds on the the money that we've already decided in the previous year's budget yes that we were going to put out to the yeah. capital money all right all of these items have received prior budget authority and all of these items at the time of that authority we said we need we'd like to finance we propose financing we're now in that position and coming back and need to seek a final authority uh, for the borrowing. Other questions? Uh, reminding everyone this is <coughs> first reading uh, and uh, scheduling a second reading, uh, which would also have a public hearing, I believe. So, uh, no more questions. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Order number 16-19, act on the request for the town council to consent to the assignment of the parking license agreement and a parking lease agreement to the new owners of the Higgins Beach Inn and authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents pertaining to this order. Uh, I'll ask the town manager to introduce this. Uh, Certainly. Uh, the town in fairly recent years, during my tenure, has entered into two different parking arrangements uh, with the Higgins Beach Inn. One is a parking license. Uh, that license has no de definite term. It automatically renews. There are uh, provisions within it to undo it if, if either party <coughs> wishes, uh, but it, it doesn't require it's no it's fixed term, if you will. And this is for the use, seasonal use, of 14 spaces on Greenwood Avenue. If you're familiar with uh, Higgins Beach Inn and the Greenwood Avenue frontage, there are spaces that are immediately in front and obviously very convenient to the inn. Uh, those were created slightly before my time, but as part of the major reconstruction work that was done down there, the roadway was widened. Just as an aside, Greenwood, like Bayview, is, uh, I believe, a 60-foot right-of-way. It's, it's very, very large, particularly for um, that neighborhood. Um, and so there's ample opportunity and at the time I think it was uh, 
thought wise to uh, expand parking opportunities given that commercial um, activity in that part of the neighborhood. Uh, most recently, the Higgins Beach Inn is under contract for sale, and as you might expect, the prospective buyer is interested in enjoying those same benefits. Um, the other arrangement we have is a straight-up parking lease. It's for use of a small little part of the municipal lot across Ocean Avenue, Ocean Street. And um, when the town bought that lot and configured the parking lot that exists today, this was kind of a carve-out that really wasn't convenient for the public to park in. It's just the way it kind of sat next to the bathhouse. Uh, and so uh, we've made an arrangement with the Higgins Beach Inn, kind of a quid pro quo. Uh, there's no remuneration for this use of these spaces, and it's used by their staff, I should say. It's not patrons of theirs. Uh, but uh, they get use of these spaces in exchange for opening and closing the gate on a daily basis. And that saves the town money where mm -hmm. we don't have to have staff there at daybreak and at sundown. And so it's worked out very, very well. Uh, and I, I highly recommend we continue um, these arrangements. Uh, public discussion on this? None. Uh, what's your pleasure? Move approval. Second. Discussion. Uh, let me just uh, add to the introduction that the town manager provided that uh, the street spaces uh, that are referred to on Morning Street are the ones that face the deck. Uh, and I think there are 11 That's or That's Greenwood Avenue. At Greenwood Avenue. Yes. Uh, uh, face onto the deck so that people can get an orientation. And I think the uh, history of the pay, it is a 60-foot right-of-way, Greenwood and Ocean. Uh, and Bayview are the three 60-foot right-of-ways. All other streets at Higgins Beach are 40-foot right-of-ways. Um, and uh, uh, I believe the Higgins Beach Inn will actually did the paving, but it is within the right-of-way still. So uh, uh, it is pub uh, public parking, but it is dedicated to, to their use. In talking with Bob Westberg, uh, the owner, he indicated that he's very excited about the a new buyer, uh, he was pleased to say that he looked for someone who had substantial innkeeping experience, uh, and so we look forward to this transition that uh, is about to uh, take place. So, uh, comments and discussion concerning the matter. Will, just again a clarification. So, this is an agreement that we've already entered into, and what we're being asked tonight is just to allow it to be assigned to the new owner. Yes, I, I beg your pardon. Both agreements have an assignment provision, which is a fairly standard contract provision. That assignment requires written consent from the town, and I lack that authority. I really, the council needs to direct me to, to grant that consent on your behalf. Thank you. And the agreements also have 90-day uh, termination clauses, uh, so that the, these are not obligations that we're making any substantial commitment of ourselves as a town. Other comments or questions? Uh, ready to vote? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, non action items? There are none. Thank you. And, uh, item nine standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. We want to start down there with Will. Sure. I had uh, uh, no. Uh, committees meet this session, but but I did stand in as the um, chair of the <coughs> appointments committee um, when we met earlier this evening, um, and we have a couple of appointments on the senior advisory board. Uh, we have uh, recommended that we appoint uh, Donna Marie Collins as the first alternate to the senior advisory board, and Kenneth N. Simmons as the uh, second alternate to the senior advisory boards, both terms to expire in 2017. Um, and for the Scarborough Housing Alliance, we have recommended uh, the appointment of uh, Marge DeSanctis as uh, a full voting member with a term to expire in 2017. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Caterina. Uh, yes, a couple of things. Uh, long term planning, um, long range planning met, and we've, um, we've kind of had to flip our, our uh, agenda because. Poor Dan was sick for part of the week, so wasn't able to do the 
what we were going to do. Anyway, we discussed uh, signage. We have ongoing issues with merchants putting up, I guess they call feather signs, those new feather signs, and we do have some restrictions under the ordinances, what you can and can't put up for signage. So we're uh, going to attempt to educate the uh, business people before we have to take any further actions on that. Um, <clears throat> and also discussed a possibility of a recommendation for a rezoning of a very unusual lot that's on Willowdale Road that is right near Route 1, just to make it a little more workable for the for the current owner um, as far as um, what the owner could do there. The lot that the buildable part is right near the road and it's not very big and then the back part of the lot just drops off to nothing. <laughs> so. Uh, just to, uh, on that, and it is uh, where it's, it'd be a good transition zoning is, is what would occur. Um, our next meeting is April Fool's Day, so uh, <laughs> we will. And then Conservation Commission on April 11th, uh, the Conservation Commission is having a free workshop that's here in the municipal building right in the council chambers. Um, it's uh, on backyard composting that will teach you uh, more about how you can compost and start your garden and save money. Uh, and I think it's apropos given everything that we've been talking about, waste stream and, and uh, there was an article about EcoMaine in the, I think it was the Sunday paper and the cost of, of recycling and whatnot. 28% uh, of Scarborough's waste stream is compostable organics and that's 2,200 tons of material. So uh, they're gonna, there's going to be um, Kitchen Gardeners International, Roger Dwaron, he actually designed the White House Garden, believe it or not. Wormania, you want to keep worms in your kitchen? Compost. <laughs> uh, Mark Follinsby, the State Department of uh, Environmental Protection is going to be coming. And then the Ecos Club, uh, which is a group of kids in Scarborough High School, is also going to do a presentation on uh, what to know about uh, composting. And just so you know, you can buy, most people don't know this, but you can buy composting bins and rain barrels from our public works department. You can get them at cost. I'm not sure what the cost is, but you can go online. Maybe we should put it up on Facebook <laughs> about that. But, we will. But um, that, so that, that's what's going on with Conservation Commission. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 7 to 9. And it's free. And invite all your friends. Okay, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Peter? Yeah, kind of three things to report out. One, the uh, Senior Advisory Committee met this week, and they're very excited. They were, as I shared last time, there's at least something that's in the budget to start looking at sort of an outdoor recreation area for the seniors. They got very excited about it. They're talking about a walking track and some other things. So they're going to be following that conversation that goes forward. We'll be talking about it here, I'm sure, as the budget process moves forward. Um, Secondly, the uh, Coastal Water and Harbor Advisory Committee met. Good news is there was a new ladder that was put in down there that they've been talking about for a while, so that was kind of high on their list. Secondly, um, their concern with some signage down there. They're worried about some of the currents that are, that are flowing around the piers and as it impacts kayakers mm -hmm. and some other things, and they're worried about making sure it's real clear mm -hmm. to what people need to do to be able to clam and have access to the beach and that type of thing. So that was sort of two things on their agenda. Um, the Shellfish Conservation Committee met, um, and their big issue, or what they're or, 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 let me go back to the coastal heart waters. For the other big thing they're looking at, it will probably be coming our way. Is they're th thinking about some type of ordinance to put in place. They're having some real issues with people leaving a lot of stuff on the docks, trash on the docks, like the bait barrels that someone will leave. Then people will start throwing like oil, used oil into them and some other things. So they're thinking about what's it going to take to have everybody kind of partake in keeping that area kind of clean and rubbish free. So we'll probably see something on that. And then on the shellfish con conservation, they met. Again, they're also worried about signage and some other things. So that's kind of, and both of them next month have election of officers. So that, that's kind of it on my part. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bebe. Thank you. Um, 
Let's see. I, I'm going to wrap three all together. Psycho, um, so it's, by the way, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And for yeah. some reason, every committee, I think, in this town has a meeting tomorrow. Um, one of the most important holidays of the year. <laughs> I know. It's like, wow. Um, but SEDCO meets tomorrow morning, and I'm really excited about that because they're actually beginning their conversation in, on their contribution to the Star Communities Program mm -hmm. and how they play a significant role in that. So I'm really excited to be there. Um, we'll report back on that later. Eco Maine. Um, is a very important meeting, as you know, um, the issues that are being faced around the whole recycling markets, the oil markets, and so forth. There's some financial challenges that I'm sure will be discussed. And the library trustees will meet tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. The bigger piece, really, uh, update around finance. Um, we had two of our meetings last week. Apologize, I was not able to make the joint session. Um, the conversation really focused around the work that uh, has been going on uh, from all of our departments regarding the budget. Um, talked about the importance of the fund balance, where we are, where we're going, and how can we plan around that so that we can better understand fund balance. The most important, um, significant uh, meeting is on March 24th. Our next meeting, we'll be having a um, discussion. It is a closed workshop in that the conversation is for the members only. Um, and I can't remember the name of the, it's like OPEC, OPEGA? No, or it used to be CPAIR, I don't know. CPAIR. Um, basically, it's the uh, Muskie School. Um, we'll be um, providing a presentation around metrics that can be used to gauge um, educational growth and educational performance um, in our community. And so it's going to be a, a significant conversation for us to um, take that into consideration as we move forward with the budget. The regular finance meeting, um, we continue our work around fund balance, capital policy. We did have a uh, presentation by our financial advisors for our bonds. Um, which was a absolutely a very good overview of where we are and understanding the importance of our community and our credit rating and how reserve funds play into that. Um, and it's going to become even more and more important as we go forward. The biggest um, piece for the public to keep in mind um, is that uh, on April 6th, our first meeting in April for the council as a whole, the manager will be presenting his budget, which will inc incorporate the superintendent's budget. And uh, we finally, or we did receive notification through our legislators that um, our total reduction in school educational funding is $1.056 million. Um, so it's a, while it's not the 1.5, 1.6 originally, there is a significant gap that is um, going to take up a lot of our conversation. Um, and then the last piece we talked a little bit about tonight and would like to have advice from my fellow counselors. We need to look at what do we want to gauge our community as a whole around metrics, financial metrics. There's been a lot of conversation about school metrics, but schools are not the only important part of our community. There's fire, police, library services, community services, um, and other parts. So uh, please take that into consideration because we're going to be coming and asking for your advice later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for those who uh, did not see it in the Press Herald uh, this week, Echo Maine. Uh, is expressing concern over the recycling markets, which are deteriorating uh, badly. As you know, uh, we participate uh, uh, as a part of Echo Main, uh, and our recycling goes to them. Uh, and uh, that market, I think, in part due to uh, reduced demand in China, uh, is uh, deteriorating. And so uh, that's going to have a financial impact. Uh, the Energy Committee met this morning. Uh, the town manager, I'm sure, is going to, who attended with me, is going to report on several aspects of that. But we are <clears throat> uh, looking at uh, uh, the issue of street lights, which has been mentioned previously, but it's now reaching the point where PUC rulings exist that will allow for communities to take action, uh, to take advantage of opportunities to better control their street light costs. Um, we also heard from <coughs> the uh, uh, Falmouth Sustainability <coughs> Coordinator uh, 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 on uh, ways in which Falmouth is moving to improve their energy efficiency. The focus of this uh, coordinator is primarily around uh, energy efficiency and uh, reducing their carbon footprint. Uh, the uh, Energy Committee will soon be working on an update to its own energy uh, comprehensive plan, so that's in the works. Uh, town Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Could
couple of quick things. Uh, just some housekeeping things. I, I was notified earlier this week that the Land Trust elected a new president. Rick Chine mm -hmm. is now the president of the Land Trust. Rick is maybe a <coughs> charter member. He's been on the, right. on the Land yeah. Trust a long, long time, long time been the secretary, and I think this might be his first time as president. So Rick is known to many of us. Uh, I'm certainly pleased and had to have a great working relationship uh, with Rick, so I look forward to his presidency. Uh, as Chairman Donovan mentioned, uh, the Energy Committee uh, did kind of a debrief on the solid waste recommendations last month or month before they made a report to you. There's a couple of follow-up items that, uh, that we're working through, and I'm pleased to say we're making advancements on. We had thought some of these would be delayed into the new budget year. Um, the first item that, uh, that we're advancing relates to the educational re-education, perhaps is a better way to, to place it. And I'm just uh, distributing copies of a sticker that will be produced and we'll actually uh, attach these, these to the top of the recycling containers, although I made the mistake of posing the question to the committee this morning, should they go in the, tr the trash container or the recycling container? And um, there wasn't a definitive answer given, so we'll sort that through. But these stickers are really intended to be a uh, constant reminder every time someone goes to the can and lifts the lid. Uh, this will be a quick little reference. And as opposed to kind of the laundry list of recyclable items, uh, this is really through a, a bit of a infographic. Is that what they call it? Yep. Uh, really intended to be a little easier to understand. And you'll note at the bottom, we are <coughs> choosing to really um, introduce this notion of composting. It's a really important component. As was mentioned, it's estimated to be 28% of our household waste in Scarborough is, uh, it can be compost compostable and out of the waste stream entirely. Um, so we're really excited about I advancing that initiative. Also, uh, Mike Shaw and I have made arrangements with one of the uh, two that we're aware of, uh, outfits that are doing uh, in some communities, curbside compost collection, mm. but we're going to be using them initially for <coughs> centralized collection. We're going to identify three locations. One will certainly be down here at Maine Veterans Home where the existing roll-off um, recycling is, uh, uh, is occurring. Uh, we're hopeful to get Walmart on board. And the third location we'd like to get in that quadrant of town over near Pleasant Hill, and we're approaching uh, Pine Tree Waste to see if they allow mm. us to put this little tote, if you will. And the intent of this, and we'll, we'll doing, we're doing some publicity with the vendor, and the vendor is Garbage to Garden, who already has a relationship with <coughs> the schools. Uh, but this is really to add another option to folks, folks that aren't able or want to do backyard composting. This will be free, and uh, it's an opportunity for them to collect their waste and distribute it at a central location. And really what's in it for us is that we're paying $70 <laughs> a ton to get rid of it at each domain, whereas this will cost the town $50 a ton. So there's a savings right out of the gate. Every, every pound that goes in this <coughs> or the other, we're saving money. So we're pleased to advance both those. Uh, I'll send you all a link. <coughs> the IT department put together a seven or eight minute video that um, reports on the results, at least initial results, of the high school laptop, the one-to-one -one initiative, and it interviews teachers and students, mm -hmm. and I thought it'd be very helpful. Many, yep. all of you were involved in one form or another of supporting that initiative, so uh, by all accounts, it seems to be doing very well. I've got a high school senior, so I can speak <coughs> on some first-person basis. Uh, it's, it's really uh, been an improvement in her experience, for sure. Quickly, uh, with the warm weather, we're actually uh, accelerating the construction season this year. Um, most importantly, I want to mention the Oak Hill Pedestrian Improvements. This is a project that's been talked about on and off for about two years in front of this council. And we went out to bid last fall. The bids were not favorable at all. Um, I don't know if it was timing or whatever. For whatever reason, we chose not to advance that. And over the winter months, had an opportunity to work with uh, a number of the, the bidders and were able to kind of uh, work through the process and, and get it closer to budget. So we're hitting a very tight window of opportunity uh, with one of the vendors. Uh, reader boards will be going up and be active as soon as tomorrow. And this project will start to be mobilized uh, next Monday on the 21st. There's about a 12 to 15 day construction period. And believe me, we're very mindful of the challenges, mm. uh, peak AM and PM at Oak Hill, and we'll be doing everything to uh, minimize that impact. 
and we've actually uh, chosen to use our police department uh, to assist in traffic control rather than just uh, work zone <coughs> safety. Uh, we think that will help facilitate things for the workers and for the residents. <coughs> Also, we're able to accomplish uh, pretty significant improvements to the parking for Eastern Trail uh, down, down here off Eastern Road, just below us. Good. We're able to almost double the spaces in the lot uh, and capture some additional spaces on Eastern Road. I mentioned that one, many of, uh, many of the folks at home are users and that lot is often full, so mm -hmm. that will be, I think, welcome change. Uh, but also it may be a matter that comes before the ordinance committee. Mm -hmm. The rest of Eastern Road we're thinking should be no parking um, because we've now provided some very good opportunities at the trailhead. Mm -hmm. um, I'll mention it, but I, I don't recall the date. Perhaps some Tody might help me recall it, but we are initiating the Pine Point improvement process. Uh, this is the lower end of Pine Point Road. Uh, there's a number of improvements we'd like to start gauging community interest around. Uh, Dan Bacon's heading up that effort as uh, is being assisted by Mike Shaw and Angela Blanchett, the town engineer. The date is uh, in the very near future. I, I beg your pardon, I don't have it. I'll make sure it's on our Facebook page. Um, <laughs> and that will be uh, definitely... It's the 22nd. March 22nd. March 22nd, I know it's the coming fire up. barn down there? It's at the fire barn, so we try to make it as convenient as we can for residents to come and listen to our ideas and, and so we can get some feedback. And lastly, I'm um, pleased to announce we did get a Project Canopy grant. This is for street tree planting. And this is uh, to locate street trees uh, at different spots along the Route 1 corridor. One of my personal um, projects has been, since I took this job, I drive by these traffic islands every day, probably oh, yeah. two or three or four times a day. And <coughs> uh, we're going to actually plant a couple of trees in the traffic islands um, to help break up the certain stretches of Route 1 just below us here on Route mm -hmm. 1. So we're very pleased. Uh, the local match will be done with in-kind labor from Public Works, so there's no capital Great. financial outlay on our part. Uh, so I'm pleased to start to do some of that beautification work. As was mentioned, two weeks from tonight, I'll, I'll be making the presentation of the budget, so wow. that certainly will be my focus for the next uh, 14 days. Nice. <laughs> And once those trees are planted, we're not going to let you leave until they've doubled in size. Uh. <laughs> that'll, that'll. Uh, is there anything to report on uh, 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 recycling uh, receptacles at municipal locations? Yes, I beg your pardon. I glossed over that. Uh, we are making arrangements to have in conspicuous locations right here in the, in the hallway, I suspect, uh, recycling trash and composting opportunities for, for for uh, employees as well as uh, the public and we're going to make a concerted effort we'll have similar facilities at all of our events mm -hmm. summer fest winter fest uh, the beaches are a bit of a <coughs> challenge that we're sorting through just kind of mm -hmm. a log logistic challenge <coughs> um, but we'll we're certainly advancing that at the same time okay. councillor comments uh when we start peter you want to start at your end yeah a good evening i think i usually don't talk about political things but I think uh, probably everybody's observed and seen what's been happening on the national level just the <laughs> type of discourse that's going on and stuff that's happening and just want to bring it back to our community we can choose to do something different and, and as, as Tom just suggested the budget's coming forth in, in two weeks and that you know I'd love us all to kind of keep in mind we can do it differently here let's be civil let's agree to disagree let's find ways we can share our opinions um, you know, some, some emails and other things in the past have become less than civil. So let's, all I'm doing is making an appeal that we're all trying to do what we think is right for the town. We all have our opinions. We all have a vote. But let's not do what the rest of the country is doing and being divisive and that type of thing. Let's work together. And I guess that's my message. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bailey. Ditto what uh, Councilor Hayes says about the politics. It's uh, an interesting time both statewide as well as locally um, you know I do want to thank everyone who has put their name forward and that is running for office I think it's very important that we have that debate um, having Scarborough's voice be louder at the state house is a very important aspect at least for myself as well um, because it does seem especially with the notice of uh, receiving a million dollars less um, this year in education um, it's even more important that we have that representation um, also want to say uh, happy Thanksgiving, uh, happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> boy, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. 
Um, I'm, I'm actually looking at Jean Marie and, and kind of laughing because uh, I think I'm going to have to move down here all the time because I noticed that Jean Marie's quieter when I'm down here. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but um, no, I, you know, I, I think this is an exciting time, but keeping it in perspective, the budget is starting. So, uh, um, so comes the uh, restless nights and uh, no sleep and uh, some <coughs> comments from everyone who has an opinion. But um, I think that we're going to get through this very well. Um, I'm, I have a high level of confidence in Tom and Ruth and George and Kate um, on the school side. I think it's going to be a very good year for us. So I appreciate everyone's patience as we get through that budget. Thank you. Councilor Caterina. I would ditto um, what both of my previous councilors uh, said. And I would remind people that, you know, when you get into this budget process and things start to get a little polarized, that instead of listening to like the neighbors third hand you can go to our Facebook page <laughs> or you can go to our website um, and people at Town Hall we're here to serve you and please get in touch with us and find out what the facts are about what's going on rather than you know thinking things are a certain way when maybe they aren't so I would just encourage people to do that that's it thank you Councilor Rowan so I just want to say thank you to the Councillors have spoken for me. I thought that was really well put. Um, I wanted to extend a couple of thank yous to some local businesses. Uh, last Friday night, the Big 20 hosted a uh, PTA fundraiser for the uh, Eight Corners uh, Primary School, um, and it was really well attended and really well done. Um, also, my my dishwasher uh, <coughs> broke last week, and so I went to the internet and. Um, came across Cole's Appliance oh, Service, yeah. which He's is right great. here on, on Gorham Road. He's great. Um, and he was fantastic. And I now have a working uh, dishwasher. So thank you, uh, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then my, my other just note of appreciation was uh, Chairman Donovan um, uh, has taken it upon himself to call all of the counselors prior to our mm -hmm. meetings to make sure that everyone's informed and up to date on the, um, on the agenda and, and the goings on. Um, that we may not be aware of, um, and I just wanted to I express my appreciation on the phone, but I just want to say publicly that that's a big time for me, <coughs> and um, I'm really appreciative of thank that. You. So, thank thanks, you. Bill. Uh, uh, just to pick up on the comments that are sort of being universally, uh, I love the fact that the uh, town council in Scarborough is an apolitical institution, uh, and and if you're going to be a public official. I think you have to be able to work with everyone mm -hmm. who is participating in that process uh, and show them respect. Uh, and uh, uh, I now made a commitment, and I, I found the first first effort was was good. It was good to just catch up. There's always something going on that I've become aware of through uh, uh, discussions with. Tom or others who I'm working on projects with, and it's good to pass that information around. So uh, it was a good start with that. Um, I'm very excited to see the trash plan get off the ground, uh, having spent months trying to find just the right <coughs> starting point for us. And, and free is always appreciated. And that's where we're kind of starting out uh, with a renewed effort. But uh, over time, I expect we're going to have a very successful uh, initiative on that. Um, I attended the budget meetings uh, uh, just as an observer and very good discussions at uh, the Finance Committee and Joint Finance Committee. Already, our Finance Committee is, is meeting once or twice a week. So it's, it's quite, uh, uh, quite a task. Uh, the town manager and I are uh, organizing the workshops out through May at this point, uh, and so we've got a number of things. Uh, of, uh, library trustees are going to be coming in in April to uh, discuss with us their strategic planning. Uh, we've got some stormwater ma matters uh, that uh, are going on, so we've got a number of things uh, in that regard. Uh, otherwise, I think uh, I certainly want to extend my congratulations to Rick Cheney, uh having attended the annual meeting of the Scarborough Land Trust. His uh, uh, election as the new president is terrific. Uh, the Scarborough Land Trust being private from but very closely associated with the town 
has done a fantastic job over the mm -hmm. last 15 years <coughs> at uh, identifying and preserving and protecting important properties. And so uh, listening to the message that uh, uh, Paul Austin, the outgoing president, gave uh, was very much one of uh, uh, working harder on stewardship, uh, making the properties available and enjoyable for all the citizens of Scarborough as well as surrounding communities. So I think that's an exciting development as far as, uh, as everyone should be concerned. Uh, uh, Hopefully, uh, Councillor St. Clair will be back, wishing her a quick recovery from uh, extended uh, knee replacements. Uh, so uh, wishing her all the best luck. So I think uh, with that. Uh, move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Thank you. <laughs>